Hey everyone, my name is Christoph Jakob. I'm a music composer for video games. And welcome to this new little series of videos which I am going to call How to Splat Band. Since I have received so much positive feedback regarding my fan-made Omega 3 Big Run remixes, I decided to start this brand new series with Omega 3. Today I'd like to show you how you could write Samurai music. We're gonna talk about what makes Omega 3 special and break down all of the six major songs. This will probably be the entire first half of this video because you just need the basics before you can actually jump into it. I'll then be talking about and showing you guys my general remixing approach as well as my work process when working on one of these remixes. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this and consider checking out my brand new Splatoon inspired album Splash 2. Thanks and let's get into it. In case you clicked on this video and you have no idea who or what I'm talking about, Omega 3 is one of the in-game bands in the Splatoon franchise, more specifically Splatoon 2 and 3, and their music plays in a mode called Salmon Run. The band is made up of three musicians, a cellist, a timpanist and a DJ. Needless to say that this is a quite unusual combination of instruments and as a result, their musical approach is extremely avant-garde and frantic, which suits the chaotic nature of Salmon Run perfectly. On top of that, barely any of the music is written in a common time signature. This is mainly meant to disorient the players and to me it is at least as important as the unusual instrumentation itself. So if that is something you're interested in, stick around. And let's dive into it starting with the instrumentation. A lot of the sounds and samples you hear in Samurai music are from libraries called Battery 4 and Omnisphere. There are obviously more than just these two libraries, but they contain a lot of the commonly used instruments. The one major exception to this is the cello, which is actually live played by Seigen Tokuzawa. All you need to replicate the sound is to load up the Spectrosonic Tokuzawa Live Cello plugin, <laughs> which is something I just made up, of course. I think pretty much any cello can yield decent results. And you only really need a live cello player if you want to get super close to the official music. Let's quickly go through my Omega 3 template. Alright everyone, let me quickly show you how my rough preset or template looks like. We're gonna start with the timpani. I'm actually not using any of the samples that they've used in the games. Instead, I've pretty much made my own timpani sample, which sounds like this. It is somewhat close to the intro of the Luch Dirge, but it's, it's still kind of its own thing. The sample I'm using is just called Tim Hits and it's from East West Symphonic Orchestra. I then decided to edit a little, put some EQ on it, put some distortion on it to get this kind of distorted sound. This. And my EQ curves for the timpani look kind of harsh actually. It's this, then I also have one. <laughs> That looks like this, where I get rid of half of the mids. This is what it would sound like if I left all the mids in. And finally, we have another EQ where I heavily boost the high end, or more like the high mids. If I were to remove that, it would sound like this. So yeah, be creative. Next, let's talk about some of the samples the DJ is using. Let's start with probably one of my favorite samples, which is one of the samples from the Gamillion kit from a plugin called Battery 4. This one. Also from Battery 4, from something called Hexenhaus kit, we have this clap sample. We continue with Apparat kit. You might remember this sound from Deluge Dirge specifically. And finally, I've added some sort of hip hop esque kit, which actually doesn't appear in the games, but it can sound nice in context. Some other instruments that are worth mentioning all come from Omnisphere. I think the sync bass also appears in almost every single Samurai track. Same with this instrument, which is called Cranky Mbira. And finally, we have this little pad here, which I think only appears in Search and Submerge. Even if you don't have access to any of the samples and instruments that have been used in the Splatoon games, you can still manage to make music that gives off typical Splatoon vibes. My first Omega 3 remix didn't use any of the correct samples either. And I'd say it still sounds somewhat close to Omega 3. Oh, 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 oh,
Just be creative and don't get discouraged if you're lacking the proper instruments. I'd say there are at least a few elements that are at least as important as the instrumentation itself. Next, let's talk about odd time signatures. Samurai music might feel random and chaotic, especially if you're not used to it. But the music is actually really sophisticated and meticulously crafted. Take away just one or two notes, one or two timpani hits or samples, and the entire tune would probably feel like there's something missing. One of the main purposes of Omega 3 music is to disorient and distract the players. And using a so-called odd time signature is a very common compositional technique to achieve that. Let's go through the six major songs of Omega 3 and let's try to figure out the time signatures. Going from simple to more and more complex. Let's start with the two easy tunes. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 One. Next, let's talk about the more tricky ones. Now, you may be wondering why I've ranked Fishing Frenzy so low. The song is written in a 3116 time signature after all. What were you thinking, Chris? Simple. One thing we need to talk about before we get into this is what's called rhythmic subdivisions. Believe it or not, but once you know how to count this tune, Fishing Frenzy is certainly one of the easier Samurai tracks. Lots of pieces of music that are written in an odd and thus more complex time signature can actually be simplified by putting them into multiple different easier rhythms. While this is not possible at all for a song like Toxic and Oxic that we're going to talk about later, you can actually divide Fishing Frenzy into 7-4 followed by 3-16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, one. I'm going to count frothy waters a little differently just because I can't speak that quickly. <laughs> One two three four one two three four one two one two three four one two three four one two three one two three four 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 one one two three four one two three four one two three four one two one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three one two three four Finally let's talk about the screw this what is the what what even is this once I'm not going to try to count along to the time signatures in Toxic and Oxic because I am completely unable to. If you do want to know the time signatures of that song, I've linked a video in the description. The song seems to be switching between 14 different time signatures, seemingly randomly. Most of these changes are sudden and unexpected. But if you know what's coming next, you can actually count along. Sort of. To me though, another very confusing song is Frantic Aspic. I have to admit that Frantic Aspic is making use of something that, at least right now, is slightly above my skill level. And that is using polyrhythms, so different time signatures at the same time. As you could hear and see, I'm pretty sure there are multiple different time signatures in there. The kick drum seems to be in 4-4, four, four, while the timpani and synths are in 7-8 and 8-8. Eight, eight. They are alternating. And the cello is... doing... something. More on that in a moment. If you think you're not good at odd time signatures yet, I recommend trying to write something in 7-4 or 7-8. Just like Deluge Dirge, for example. These are probably the easiest odd time signatures out there. My remix of Rip Entry, the very first one I made, is primarily in a 7-8 time signature too. The original is written in a common 4-4 time. For demonstration purposes and for better understanding, let's call it 8-8 time signature. And if you want to put something into 7-8 now, you need to find a way to get rid of one of those eighth notes. 
And since we're trying to write Omega 3 style music, it doesn't even have to sound all that elegant. Here's how I did it for my remix of Rip Entry. If you wanted to practice and make an Omega 3 style remix of something like Scup Lamb, you could just omit the final eighth of each bar for example. Here's a quick and simple mock-up. And there we have it, a remix of Scap Lamb in Omega 3 style. And it sounds okay. Well, so far, we know about the instruments that we can use. We also know about all the different odd time signatures that are commonly used in Omega 3 music. Does that make it a banger already though? Or is there still more to it than that? A few more things you need to know if you want your remixes to sound close to the official music. Notice how the cello and timpani are often using something that's called call and, blah, call and response. One instrument plays a melody and a second instrument plays the same or a similar melody as a response. Close tied to this is the fact that yes, the timpani, despite being a drum, is actually playing quite a bunch of melodic lines here. When we're talking about remixes, we have to take a closer look at bait and click specifically. At the time of recording this video, which is 1740, <laughs> at the time of recording this video, we still only have one single piece of music that plays in Big Run, sadly. I hope they will change that in the future. If you are from the future, please leave a comment and let me know if they've added more music. Bait and click is directly sampling elements from the original, in this case, clickbait. So, sprinkling in some edited samples can really go a long way. Sampling, at least in this context, is basically taking little pieces and fragments from an already existing piece of music and using it in a different context for a different purpose. One thing that I would call crucial, which is probably going to be the hardest thing to get down right, is that there's generally a part where the cello takes over and goes completely insane. Beside all these different techniques, there is still usually a couple of unpredictable and chaotic elements in the music. As an example, listen to Toxic and Noxic front to end. <laughs> Furthermore, and that's one thing that I still need to work on myself, is that sometimes less is more. 
Having too much going on at the same time is also chaotic, but it's the wrong kind of chaotic. If you've ever been curious what my personal favorite Omega 3 star remix of myself is, then I can pretty confidently say it's Seascape. I just think I've never been closer to their style than with this remix. Let me quickly break down why I think so and what I did. Let's take a quick listen first. I used pretty much all of the instruments that I talked about earlier. In this particular remix I also added some samples from the original tune, for example in the intro. Another element that I spent quite some time on with this remix is all the different time signature changes. Most of this tune is switching between a 7-4, 9-4 and 11-4 time signature. Whereas this one part later is in a 15-8 time signature. I also made sure to add some unexpected and random elements here and there, like here for example. A few things that I think I could have done a little better. I did not really make use of call and response that much. And most importantly, there isn't really that one major section where the cello is going crazy. So those are two things I should probably still try to keep in mind for my next remix of this kind. I think it's important to emphasize that Omega 3 music isn't just completely random and chaotic. There's a lot of thought put behind every single decision. You can't just use the original samples, somehow throw them together and expect the outcome to sound good. It might not even sound decent. If you want to practice how to write something in a specific music genre, and I think at this point we can all agree that Omega 3 is pretty much its own music genre, I recommend listening to a lot of reference tracks and taking them apart, finding out what makes them sound the way they do, what makes them special. What are your thoughts on Omega 3 music though? If you've also made Omega 3 start remixes before and you feel like I forgot to mention something that's crucial about their style and approach, feel free to leave a comment and let's start a discussion. Thanks for watching. I put quite some time and effort into this video, so I would really appreciate it if you could share it around. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Check out my Omega 3 style remixes as well as my brand new Splatoon inspired album Splash 2. And I'll see you next time.